Well, welcome back to Real America's Voice and Just the News' special coverage of Election 2020. And we are very happy that right now we are joined by Jenna Ellis, Senior Legal Advisor to the Trump Campaign, to give us all and to give you an update on where things stand legally. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This is a really important day. and. The coming weeks are going to be incredibly important as well. They're going to be incredibly important. And we know our viewers want to hear from you, from the Trump campaign, on exactly where things stand legally. If you could please give us an update. We know that there are a lot of legal challenges in a lot of different states. Yes. But tell us what's most important that's happening right now. Yes, well, the most important thing for everyone to realize is that uh, the president and the legal team are fighting to make sure that every legal vote is counted fairly and accurately. We want to make sure that the Constitution and the process is followed. That's true in every election. And so what we've done is that we filed lawsuits and also we will be uh, asking for recounts in six states currently. And so uh, a, a lot of people are comparing this, of course, to 2000 and Bush v. Gore. Well, that was a one car crash, right? This is a multi-state, uh, multi-car pileup. So we have a lot of accident reconstruction to do before we actually get to the bottom of this. So I would tell the American people, be patient. We have time. States have not certified uh, any of their results yet. That's exactly what our Pennsylvania lawsuit asked the court uh, today, the federal court in Pennsylvania, to say, stop, we need to wait and have meaningful access to the ballots, see where all of the fraud is, all of these allegations of, of irregularities, and we need to have uh, confidence in the accuracy and the results. So we need to wait for any certifications until everything is open, transparent, and we can get to an accurate count. Uh, Jen, I guess, you know, my biggest question, because I feel like our viewers keep asking me two things. Uh, number one, what is the timeline? And I know you don't really know. You can't say it's going to be just this long. But if this goes into December or January, what does that look like? Have you contemplated that? And the second part of my question is, I think everyone would like some reassurance of the president's mm, resolution. Um, and also his spirits, especially in light of, I know there was a big prayer effort today uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern, and I think people would like to know that, uh, that he's aware of that. Yeah, absolutely. And those are two great questions, Gina. And um, as to your second question first, um, I've spoken with the president in recent days. I was on the phone with him last night. And, you know, he is resolved to preserve and defend and protect the U.S. Constitution like his oath of office uh, instructs and requires him as the president of the United States. He has not wavered from that. Um, he was in good spirits when I talked to him last night. You know, of course, I think like um, every American who cares about legitimacy in our elections, uh, this bothers him greatly. And that's why he is willing to say, regardless of the outcome, we want to make sure that we have a fair and accurate count. He knows that this isn't just about the outcome of his election. It's about the outcome of every election in America in the future. And so absolutely, I think the American people can have confidence in his resolve, his love of this country, and his love and commitment to the U.S. Constitution and our rule of law. And so in terms of the time frame, um, you know, President Trump, like everyone else, would love to see this resolved as soon as possible. The lawyers are working hard. Hard, but what I would say is that we're trying to do this as expeditiously as possible, but we want to do this as accurately as possible. So I can't give you a relative time frame. Uh, like you said, you know, I think we all know that. But um, the constitutional process can take some time. We saw Bush v. Gore took 37 days. Uh, we're only on day six right now. So, so to, just to give you kind of some, a relative scale, and we're also dealing with a lot more issues than we were in 2000. Thanks, Jenna. And, and, and Jenna, if I, could, if I could follow up on that, just for, for all of our, our viewers at, at home, it's a lot to follow. As you mentioned, you've got all of these different states, you've got different legal challenges, you have all of the issues that John Solomon and his team are investigating. Just lay out for our viewers, most basically, the key idea behind most of these challenges. First, of course, is that we want to make sure that there was an accurate count. Yes. And then also that there was a fair count. Kind of break that down for folks about what fairness uh, means and why these legal 
uh, actions or sometimes challenging the fairness of the counting. Yeah, well, I'll go to the baseball analogy because yes. I don't understand football as well as the guys, <laughs> so I'll just make sure to you know put that one on the table. But um, I'm a Colorado Rockies fan, and uh, you know we all know that there are challenges and instant replays, and you look at the calls that are made on the field. So all we're asking is that when it comes down to that last pitch, you want to make sure that you call the ball or the strike fairly on each vote. So if it falls outside the strike zone for any reason that's falling outside of the legal and that's saying that's not a legally appropriate a vote to count and so it is a foul ball and so you can't count it but if it falls within the strike zone uh, all all of the legal mechanisms and all of the ways that you count legal votes then absolutely we want it to count so at the end of the game after the seven innings uh, you know and, and all of the uh, you know the seventh inning stretch everything you know that we're doing the nine innings the 12 innings however many we have to have until the end we want to make sure that the tally at the end of the game is fair and accurate so that when we declare a winner, it's not because we're going to offend half of the stadium. It's that the umpire makes the call based on where the ball fairly lies. Yeah. And if, if I can push the baseball analogy even further, the idea is that the strike zone has to be the same whether yes. you live in the city or a rural area. The strike zone has to be the same whether you work in a Democratic county or a Republican county. The idea is that we're going to make sure that everyone is treated fairly. And that's yes. what you and your team and, are And that's where you know you can call and you can challenge a ball for, for different reasons based on what happens, whether there was a hit, whether there you know, is outside the strike zone for all kinds of reasons. So that's what we want to see is where are these ballots uh, coming from, what's going on with this, so we have a multi-tiered uh, level of ways of challenging this, so we've got to figure out what exactly is going on, make sure every legal vote counts. Now